Coming up, here are four things you better do to your app before you launch it. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow your app downloads and your revenues. And today, we're going to talk all about the key features you really need in your app to help with your eventual growth. And joining me, like always, is Haim from B7Dev, the app development firm that I know and trust, B7Dev.com. Haim, our last video series. I'm going to miss you after this. Okay, I'm always here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're just a phone call away. All right, Haim. Well, the number one thing that I think the feature-wise is tracking your onboarding pages. So one of the, the key metric that I look at is paywall view over install or first open, right? And I want to make sure that rate, that conversion rate in terms of view rate, that paywall view rate is close to 100% as possible because most people buy during the onboarding process. And so you want everybody that's opening your app for the very first time to be seeing your paywall. And so you can use either Firebase, and you correct me if I'm wrong, or Mixpanel. We have a, I get an daily email for one of our apps with a mixed panel report that says, here's how many people activated trial for me. And so we're averaging 15, 16% trial activations, but that's the number one thing that you got to make sure you build. Yeah, you have, so today you have a lot of packages to do it mostly focusing on that, on Firebase and mixed panel. Again, is, this is the difference between shooting in the dark. I mean, you don't know what your users are doing and to keep track of them at least in a statistical way okay to know what they are doing of course that you know more than me about all kind of technical details to to add or techniques not technical details but mostly techniques to do the customers or, or the users to use more the app or to activate earlier and again even you recommended to ask to customers to do the modifications that you need to track all those events for us. Yeah, because we've seen really good results with like decreasing onboarding screens. One of my, our clients went from seven to four and he saw an increase in conversions. One of the other clients we work with only showed a paywall and did not have an onboarding screen. So we added three different screens to talk about the benefits of the app. He saw a 234% increase in overall conversions. So having that detail allows me to kind of figure out where are the holes in your app. And then if it's the onboarding screen, if we're seeing 90%, but only seeing 3% conversions, then we know we have to focus on our paywall, which leads me to the next point. Show your paywall during the onboarding process. Anywhere from 60 to 80% of all the people who end up buying from you will buy before they even use your app. I know it's counterintuitive, but it's been true since 2019 when a friend of mine first told me, actually, I think it was like 17 or 18, but it works. It's one of the biggest regrets that app developers have because once they did it, they notice an instant increase in revenue. So make sure you show your paywall on the onboarding process. Yeah. Also, it's a, it's a really great idea that we did uh, no a long time ago for a customer that uh, is a common customer, uh, that is that you can uh, activate and deactivate remotely the paywall so you can easily show you look we deactivate the paywall so you see what is the behavior of the users here and then tomorrow we activate it remotely so everyone is turning the app will be with the paywall just on the onboarding so you will see the difference i mean it's not today it's not that hard to be done and to show the results very short time and then number three heim this works like a charm but you show the default app store review prompt on the onboarding process and after your paywall that has shown to increase your number of ratings. Your average rating does not suffer as much as you think it will, but it will lead to more five-star reviews by just asking people for a review. Yes, even before they use your app, I've seen it work really well. And from a, a math data standpoint, because I love data, about 1% of the downloads will give you a rating. So you know, if you can drive more downloads, you'll get more ratings. Now, people tend to wait. You can, if you don't want to be that aggressive. I do it on second open. So that's another option. And the other option is obviously after a user has done something within your app. So if it's like a to-do list app, they've added one to-do. If it's a meditation app, they've done one meditation. Ask for that review 
right then and there. Just pop it up. A lot of misconceptions from the user side of view. You know, they say, I want a huge number of free users before we convert. And then maybe it's not the right approach for them because they are starting small. This is okay for big sharks in the industry. When you have, okay, we will release, I mean, we have the money to do it. We will release a new service, a new app, and we will give a lot of free users. Then we will have millions. We just uh, raise the phone to the investors. We have millions of users for free. And then give me all the money that I'm asking for if you want to be a part of the app. And it doesn't work like this usually. They want to see numbers, okay? And then uh, not always the, the free riders are the number that they want to see. They want to see how you plan to monetize. You are asking for reviews to the store. They say it's too aggressive. Okay, but then show me how you do at what moment you do it in order to get a better number of reviews, okay? And maybe usually what you get is zero, okay? So so maybe it conven- it's more convenient to get aggressive from the start. I mean, not everything is, is so evident from the common the common misconceptions. So, so I recommend everyone uh, watching this video, maybe talk with Steve about this because uh, he has real world cases showing that small tweaks can do a really big difference for, for the app, or for the success at least. You need to survive in the first the first time. Speaking on that, Haim, here's the smallest tweak that you can make. If you have good downloads, here's the small, and I would say good downloads, anywhere from like 20 downloads a day and up. Here's what we see. Do a hard paywall. Hard paywall just means there's no X. The app is free to download, and if you want to use the app, then you're going to have to activate a trial. If you look at Calm these days, there's very little content that is technically free. So a hard paywall works. We've seen it with our app where we we lost. We launched as a hard paywall, Heim. I was against it, but my co-founder was like, no, we got to do it. Or we already made it like that. And I didn't want to have scope creep. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to mess with it, right? Let's just get the data. And the data showed that we were making, we went from $1,000 a month to $10,000 a month with the same amount of downloads by optimizing the paywall, increasing the price and doing a hard paywall. And guess what, Haim? When we lost the hard paywall for a moment, we lost half the sales. We made 5,000 that month because there was an X and the X makes a huge difference. So other apps we've worked with, they've reported three times more sales. I mean, it really depends on your long-term vision, but if you're just getting going and you need that early revenues just to show the investors for that next round, then I would say test the hard paywall. And Haim, I love what you said, remote config. Be able to configure your paywall remotely. Beautiful. The important point here for new developers, the new entrepreneurs, is to survive into the market. If you spend a lot of money giving a lot of free content, okay, you will be paying the party for a lot of uh, free riders. You will make a lot of people happy, everyone but you. So the idea is to, okay, maybe the people will say, okay, this is not a free app. I will delete it. Anyways, the, the final result is the same for you. Even if you you have less users, but they will be paying and they will be giving useful feedback instead of, okay, I like it very much, but in zero money on the bank. So the first idea is to survive, to keep uh, alive, you know, to promote the app, to to give more impulse to the app, to give uh, future versions, okay? And not just to make a lot of people happy. Because, you know, small tweaks, they do a lot of difference. And I really recommend to work with Steve on this because you have a real world examples. From my, my perspective that I talk with on a weekly basis with new entrepreneurs or customers and etc., it's really hard to get people that knows what needs to be done. Or at least what is not what you need to do, okay? They will tell you a lot of stuff. Yeah, I can do marketing for you. I can develop this for you. And in the end, they don't know on real life how it works. So small tweaks that really work. I really recommend to listen to what Steve is saying. Otherwise, we won't be promoting the show all this time and after all these years because we are really happy with the customers that they share the results that they get working with Steve. Once again, it is B7Dev. Dot com. If you're looking at development firm, I think one closing thought I want to leave with I'm is track the onboarding. Everything is that first time user experience because even the best apps tend to have really low day two, day one. You know, Voodoo looks at 40 to 60% of day one. 
that means you know 40 to 60 percent of their users are leaving so that's a good retention rate and that's why we say like be a little bit more aggressive in that first time user experience and in that initial v1 launch stage so I'm said it beautifully so that you can get to stage two, whatever that stage two looks like. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and people get so stuck up on stage one that they never make it past to stage two. And I would say like stage two is maybe anywhere from like five to $10,000. Like they won't hit that because they're so focused on the wrong things. And that's what we're both here to do is to really help you guide Haim on the development side and me on the marketing side. All right. This is great, Haim. Thank you so much for sharing this. Last time, b7dev.com, a longtime partner of the App Masters channel and team. Haim, I really appreciate you sharing all your valuable content. Thank you. And then, by the way, I promise here, because otherwise I won't be doing, I will be starting my channel really soon, but I need to promise here in front of everyone because <laughs> otherwise I'm like two years from now trying to start it, but I have no time. I will be starting very soon to do my own channel, also sharing with uh, Steve. Okay, so more for more different approaches for rational development, okay, I will be doing some kind of episode. I love it. And when, once he has that up, I will... Let the entire App Masters family know as well. So Haim said it. He's going to get it launched. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. And then stay tuned and subscribe to the App Masters channel and then Haim's new channel when he launches it as well. And I'll see you on the next video.